All right, uh, welcome everybody. This is my first screencast of the series. Um, and today we're going to be talking about um, setting up Ruby on Rails web development environment, uh, but using Docker. Um, and before, but before we get there, uh, all good screencasts start with uh, advertising. And so I will do here. Uh, I'll start with some shameless uh, self-promotion. Uh, we're Amberbit, we're doing Ruby on Rails and Elixir and JavaScript web development and we, we're available for hire if you want a dedicated team of good developers. All right, uh, now that we have this over, uh, let's start with our little project today, shall we? Um, first thing first, uh, Docker is a way to uh, start containers, uh, which are like virtual machines running on top of uh, Linux kernel. Uh, it's available uh, for different operating systems, so you can download it for Mac, Windows, and uh, Cloud, and, and different uh, Linux uh, versions as well. Um, I'll not get into details how to install it, uh, but in order to continue with this screencast series, you'll need uh, to have uh, Docker installed. Uh, the other tool you're gonna need is Docker Compose. Uh, it's also a tool provided by Docker. And while Docker itself allows us to build self-contained virtual machines that our Ruby on Rails um, code will run inside, Docker Compose allows us to build the projects and this project can, con can uh, contain one or more uh, components and those components can be our applications. Uh, in bigger projects it's rarely the case that you have just one application in a project so this is a nice way to start up all of our related applications together. In addition to that it allows us to also um, start our dependencies. Um, in our case today we will be setting up very basic Ruby on Rails web application uh, development environment where we have just one web application, uh, we, we'll call it web app, and one dependency in the form of Postgres database. Um, Docker itself uh, uses um, images of uh, virtual machines that, that we base our uh, dedicated virtual machine on, and I chose uh, to base my development environment on Fusion Base Image Docker. Um, the choice is um, made because this is uh, mostly standard Ubuntu, the most recent Ubuntu version. However, it's slightly customized to support uh, running into Docker container better. It's got full init system, uh, syslog, you can have cron configured inside your docker virtual machine and secure shell as well. Uh, these are things that, that don't ca come a standard in normal Ubuntu image. Uh, obviously you can tweak it, uh, but this is just start gives a nice uh, uh, starting point for our custom image. And I also put together uh, on our GitHub account uh, Amber Pit Rails Docker template a simple template that, that's, that's going to be a starting point for setting up our development environment. Okay, um, so if you want to follow along, uh, clone this repository, I'll do that as well. Uh, just to make sure that this is all visible. Um, git clone Rails and Docker template. All right. Uh, Let's change directory and let's have a look what we have here. So, uh, first file is our uh, Docker Compose YAML file. And this file uh, basically is a configuration for, uh, for Docker Compose. This is like a, our project file where we define all the services that our Docker Compose is going to start. Uh, in our case, we're going to start a database service uh, and we instruct Docker Compose to build it from the standard Postgres image that's going to be 
pulled from Docker registry, uh, set up for us and configured. Uh, we also will be using the other service, which is our going to be our custom service, custom image. Uh, this is going to be web app. Uh, we're going to store it in web app directory. Um, we launch the web application with you know bundle exec rails and binds to port 3000. And the other thing we have to do is to configure the mapping of the mounted directories in our local directory. Uh, we have this web app folder where our uh, Ruby on Rails source code is going to sit and we just tell Docker Compose to, to mount this uh, local web app directory into slash web app in the container that's going to be created. The last thing, uh, almost the last thing, is forwarding ports. Uh, in order to access our Ruby on Rails web application, we want to forward the port 3000 uh, to the container. And we also say that this web app depends on DB, so it cannot start without it. Um, when we start our project, this web app is going to be started when the DB is started. Um, as a side effect, this also allows uh, to access the, uh, the DB virtual machine from the web app virtual machine using the name DB. Uh, so we don't have to use IP address and not configure anything. Uh, this DB is going to be added to the host file. Uh, so we can have a nice communication between those. Um, okay. Uh, the other configuration file uh, this template comes with is a Docker file. And it's pretty, pretty small. I try to keep it basic so you can uh, edit it yourself. Uh, let's run through it quickly. Uh, this just instructs to use this base image docker from the Fusion guys uh, and, and start it properly. Then we need to add the... We, we need to install most recent Ruby version, which is currently 2.4. I'm using the Brightbox RubyNG uh, packages, which are kindly provided by the Bright, Brightbox uh, guys for us, uh, so we can uh, we don't have to compile our Ruby ourselves. We install some dependencies, uh, build essentials, uh, SSL, etc., etc., uh, and also uh, we install Ruby uh, in the most recent version, which is currently resolved to 2.4.1. Uh, little utility uh, tool we also installed in the step above allows us to switch the globally Ruby version. Uh, in the container, so the Ruby command is Ruby 2.4. We do some cleanup. Uh, we don't want to run our web application as a root, even, even in the container, so we create a special web app user for it. Uh, we make this directory in slash web app, change this directory, and now we add to our image those uh, gem file uh, and gemify log files that, uh, that I also prepared as part of this uh, template. Uh, we're going to discuss those in a second. Next steps. Uh, make sure that our proper permissions and login as a user. Also configure the Ruby and Ruby gems to install all the gems locally because again we don't want to run bundle install or install any gems as a root. We want to keep it contained within web app user. Uh, install bundler, rake and run bundle install at the end. Uh, so that's the receipt that Docker is and Docker Compose are going to use to build up our development environment. Okay, uh, I mentioned two other files. We have gemfile and gemfile log. Gemfile log is, is empty. That's a just file added here so the, that the bundle doesn't complain. Uh, gemfile uh, itself uh, points to uh, Ruby gems and since we want to also generate the initial web application scaffold from within the container and we don't want to install Rails on our host machine at all um, to keep it nice and clean, uh, we install Rails uh, inside this gem file. So when we initially build the, the Docker image for the web app, it's not going to contain any uh, like Ruby on Rails project files. Uh, we want to scaffold that. Uh, uh, but we need to have uh, Ruby on Rails installed gem 
and this what's gonna bundle install is gonna do for us. Okay, um, let's go back to our console and see how those things uh, work in practice. Um, first command we have to execute is to build this uh, environment is docker compose build. This might actually take uh, longer for you, uh, depending on your uh, connection. Um, I already did that a couple of times uh, today and yesterday, so it's mostly using cached uh, versions for me, so it was instant. This is a really nice thing about this image and uh, Docker that unless you're making some um, basic changes, the, the sequential builds of, of the image are going to be uh, very, very fast. And what it did is, is basically took the docker compose file, ran through all the services, installed uh, the database, installed our web app, built the, con uh, uh, built the uh, container for our application. Uh, the container is now nowhere here. It's somewhere in the var directory, var docker, I believe. Uh, so it doesn't pollute our uh, project uh, directory. It's still nice, clean and tidy. Uh, but we need to generate our uh, Ruby and Rails application. And in order to do that, you have to, well, normally you would just do Rails, new, and then some parameters. Uh, but since we're uh, using our um, Docker, and we, we need to execute this command within Docker, com uh, Docker container, Docker compose co comes with uh, following syntax. syntax. Uh, Docker compose run, and now we give the name of the container. In our case, this is going to be web app. Uh, so if you want to generate a new project, we do that. Docker compose run web app rails new. Directory is the current directory which maps to slash web app within the container and to local web app directory within the uh, our project. We force so that it overrides those uh, initial gem file or gem file log, and we're gonna use uh, database Postgres. Let's try that. As we can see, what it did is it says it created uh, those files, and now it's installing those files. Let's have a look whether uh, this actually worked. It looks like it did. So in, inside the web app, we now have uh, our standard Rails scaffold uh, for our project, which is really nice. Um, but in order to uh, connect with a database, we also have to modify the uh, database YAML file. And that's what we're going to do here. It's got some unnecessary comments that I'm just going to strip because I don't like those. Uh, let's clean this up. And blah, blah, blah. Okay, that looks fine. Uh, so our uh, config uh, database YAML, we need to specify the host. And we can use the DB host name. Uh, username Postgres and the password is going to be empty. And in the meantime, we can see that uh, installing all the uh, gems finished, which is nice. Uh, and now we can, okay, so after we modify gem file, uh, we have to rebuild our Docker image because uh, otherwise those those dependencies, those gems, the new gems installed on the system are not going to be uh, within our Docker image. We have to rebuild our container only when we modify the gem file or we need, want to install extra software within the container itself. So if we need a package, uh, we will add it to the Docker file, run the compose build. So it also includes that um, extra uh, extra libraries or, or tools. However, we don't have to run the Docker build, uh, Docker compose build when we modify our source code. Uh, this is going to work uh, out of the box. This is because uh, the image itself doesn't uh, contain those uh, Rails 
files at all. They are just in a mounted uh, directory. So we can just modify those and they will be picked up immediately. Okay, uh, so we have to build it. Okay, that's nice. Uh, and now I think we can start our web application. Docker Compose comes with app, uh, alternatively start, uh, also would start uh, all the services, but I'm just going to use Docker Compose app here, uh, which takes the Docker Compose file and starts all the services in proper order. And let's do that. Let's see what it does. Uh, first, as you can see, it started the DB service, uh, which is our uh, Postgres service. Uh, and then we started our... Uh, Ruby on Rails web application. Uh, so far, so good. Let's have a look uh, whether that works. Yeah, you're on Rails. So that seems like we generated our um, first application correctly. Okay, cool. Uh, let's now create a database. Again, Docker Compose run web app reg db create. This can be aliased to something shorter uh, if we don't want to type those Docker Compose run web app all the time. <coughs> and as you can see, uh, we created a database uh, for uh, development and test. This is all we need. Okay, uh, now uh, what do we have to do now? Right probably makes sense to generate some scaffold. So, Docker Compose run web press on scaffold for users, first name, last name, email, okay. And now run the migrations. All right, let's see whether that works. Slash users. Okay, new user, let's create a user. Uh, we create the user, nice. Let's see whether that survives the project restart. So I'm just gonna control C here to stop the project. Our web app stopped, the database container stopped. And let's bring it up again. Um, okay. Let's refresh the page. Here we go. Uh, the Postgres is configured in a way that it pre preserves the uh, database itself, which is nice. So we don't have to recreate everything from scratch on the next run. Uh, the last thing is to check whether our tests pass. Ah, this is not going to work because we have to uh, compose run web app uh, rake test, I believe. Again, this starts our uh, Docker template and runs our tests, nine assertions, zero failures. So all those scaffolded tests are passing uh, and looks like we have our web development environment set up correctly. Okay, uh, in the next uh, episode, I'm going to be show you how to deploy uh, your application, uh, Ruby on Rails web application to uh, to the server using Docker. Uh, so stay tuned, follow our blog on amberbit.com. Um, we have some nice interesting posts there, not just screencast, actually this is the first one. Uh, and see you again next time. All right, thank you, bye.